good day student of this great university bar university kano we are going to treat module 3 of gsp 1202 and gsp 2202 that is the use of library study skills and ict in this module 3 we are going to cover three vital aspects that is the copyright and censorship database management and the last one that is the application of ICT to library and information services introduction library and information centers are gateways to knowledge and culture also libraries have come to be regarded as people's university this is because they provide access to knowledge learning and ideas all these are essential component to fostering creativity and innovative society this unique role placed by library can be seen in a way they provide personalized information to team in populace and they are also available to respond to any question raised by a group or through individuals of their society this complement the general transmission of knowledge by the media and makes libraries vital to the creation of a well-informed citizenry and a democratic and often information society national development index are normally measured by the level of information flow and use among it it's not surprising that two countries ranking number one in the un human development index over the last 10 years are norway and canada both have the strong library infrastructure Libraries are not just shelves of books or collection of database. No, they are better than that. They are more than that. Resources are carefully selected, acquired, processed, organized, and arranged in systematical order by trained professionals, that is the librarians. Libraries as custodians of most of information resources support copyright because they recognize the need for creators to be rewarded for their work and for creative works which to be protected for piracy and other unfair exploitations librarians also uphold the value of copyright laws and encourage their users to respect them as well copyright and censorship of materials in library let's begin with the copyright what is a copyright the term sound familiar to some of you but let's get it in a better way from intellectuals copyright is the legal right to produce, publish, and sell the matter and form of a literary, dramatic, musical, or artistic work. The right is tenable for a limited but long period of time, which may vary from country to country, meaning that what may be regarded as copyright to this country may not be the same in another country. It is also the branch of law granting authors that is the originator or creators of artistic work that exclusive privilege to produce distribute perform or display their creative works so what is the goal of this copyright the goal is to encourage authors to invest effort in creating new works of art and literature Copyright is one among the three branches 
of intellectual property law. The remaining two are the trademark and the patent. However, not every work of authorship is eligible for copyright to qualify for copyright protection. A work must be fixed and original. How can we determine a work is fixed or original? Let's begin with the term fix. The law considers a work to be fixed if it is recorded in some permanent format. Acceptable ways of fixing a work include writing it down, storing it on a computer fluffy disk or comfort disk, recording it on video tape, or sculpturing it in marble. For example, if a poet thinks of a new poem and recites it to an audience without writing it down, copyright does not protect the form because it is not fixed. To be original, the work must not be copied from previously existing material and must display at least a reasonable amount of creativity. By granting authors authority and protection over their work, copyright is intended to stimulate creativity and increase flow of information intellects and ideas both within and society and internationally violation of normally of copyright in nigeria is a crime which is usually punishable by a fine or imprisonment or even both so we have to be very careful of infringing copyright laws this literary work is regarded as an of intellectual property which is granted copyright protection based on moral, economic, and cultural ground in order to 1. guarantee the author a monopoly right to control for a specified period, the uses means of his work including sale to publisher, 2. it must guarantee a publisher a monopoly right to print or arrange to print a work within national boundaries for a specified period of time and it must provide financial compensation for authors to reward for their creativity and also to foster the development of art and sciences in general we must also take into cognizance that violation of copyright laws is not like theft but has serious consequences upon the intellectual and cultural development of a nation. The law governing the copyright activities in Nigeria is known as the Nigerian Copyright Act. It's not as what? Nigerian Copyright Act. This act was first into law in 1988. In 1988 and was amended again in 1992. It was first into law in the year 1988 and was amended in the year 1992. The act spells out work is eligible for copyright, the general nature of copyright in various creative works, the right of the copyright holder, how this right can be violated, the action that can be taken the moment the right is violated, the duration of copyright, the establishment of a corporate body for the administration of copyright matters known as the Nigerian Copyright Commission, headed by the Director General. Copyright rules. What students need to know. You are the student. Knowing fully that the internet has brought issues of copyright to the forefront like nothing else in history. The ease and speed with which people can share digital information has also made it very easy to commit copyright infringement, internationally or not. It becomes very imperative to ensure students and users in general are made to be aware of copyright rules.
in order to avoid being copyright violated. With the availability of data which have come to drop access to internet services to the fingertips of most students, you students, yeah. This have also made project research and paper writing easier than they have ever been before. If proper procedures are not followed, many students as well as researchers run the risk of violating or infringing on copyright rules without even knowing they are doing so. As such, it becomes important for each student to take note of the following important issues. 1. Plagiarism and Copyright Though the two terms may sound synonymous, but in the actual sense, they are not. Plagiarism entails copying someone else's work and taking credit for it as your own original without any acknowledgement that is the respect to the author of that information. While copyright infringement entails using someone else's work and not paying them for it. 2. You are not allowed as a student to make photocopy of the entire content. You are not allowed at all. Students are not allowed to make photocopy of the entire content of artistic work. Be it a content from a textbook or any other information resources. All photocopying must be within the principle of the fair usage. That is the principle which implies that only certain pages of an information resource is allowed to be photocopied by a user for research and learning purpose. If you want the entire document or content, you have to purchase your own copy. 3. Copyright protection is not limited to only information resources such as book. Other types of work protected by copyright include but not limited to poetry, software, music, plays, songs, novels, and other literary work, audio recordings, and even architecture. So copyright does not, however, protect intangible such as ideas, methods of operation or system. In addition, copyright does not protect things that are not attributable to a creator, such as facts. Next, copyright protects both a published and unpublished work. Yeah, that is number four. Unpublished works include bounded copies of projects found in universities and other education centers. Five. Immediately as soon as you put fan to a paper, brush the cumbers, fingers to keyboards, and create something original, something new, it is copyrighted. You necessarily don't have to, but it is a good idea to add a copyright symbol to things you create because that is your own initiative. Not having the symbol doesn't mean content isn't still protected by copyright. Next, in general, for any type of work, the copyright is in effect from the time the author creates it. Yeah, the time the author creates that work. Until that author's date, plus another 70 years beyond the date of theirs, beyond the date of his or her death, then copyright duration does vary. Yeah, it varies. However, according to when the work was published and in what manner and whether the copyright 
was renewed. It is impossible to bequeath creative work and their copyright to the people other than the original authors. For example, if you write a book, you can leave that book and its unsold right to your ears. In conclusion, what I'm trying to say here is that violation of copyright laws can easily be carried out in the library. It is important also that librarians as custodian of most intellectual properties with copyright protection be made to play a strong role in ensuring that successful implementation of copyright laws. Censorship The term censorship is drawn from the Latin word censor, which means to access. Which means what? To access. That is to have an access to something. Censorship is the separation of speech or the deletion of communicative material which may be considered objectionable, harmful, or sensitive as determined by a censor. Another definition from the Encyclopedia of Library and Information Sciences it defines censorship as an effort by a government, private organization, groups or individuals to prevent people from reading, seeing or hearing what may be considered as dangerous to government or harmful to the public morality. In Harrow's Liberian Glossary, censorship is the prohibition of production, distribution, circulation or sell of material considered to be objectionable for reason of politics, religion, obscenity or blasphemy. So censorship normally is being conducted by government. From all this definition, we can figure out that those who conduct censorship could be government, private institutions, and corporations. So what is the role of libraries and librarians here? Normally, libraries are the custodian of knowledge. But looking at the conduct of censorship, libraries and libraries are in dilemma at their objective revolves around the provision of information resources and service to users whose reading interests span across all areas of human endeavor without reservation and without bias. A library is a public facility where people can consult whatever form of information they want without fear or exception. Librarians are constantly now under pressure by several factors, either internally or externally, to subdue or take away from the shelves of information resources considered harmful to the society. Therefore, it becomes difficult to arrive at which acceptable criteria for defining what people should read or should not read and whose job is it to enforce and implement such criteria. Is it the librarian, the government, the private institution or the corporation? Type of censorship there are basically five types of censorship that is the political moral ethical religion military and internet censorship let's begin with the first one that is the political censorship political censorship normally occurs when government hold back information from their citizens 
that is through denial of certain information to its member that is the people of their society many political parties publish many objectionable items which may create unwanted problem for the government in this case government is forced to wade into the situation through censorship banning this form for political publication through legislation or executive order two moral and ethical censorship moral censorship in the removal of material that are censor regards to be obscene or otherwise questionable pornography for example is often censored under this rationale especially child pornography which is concerned in most jurisdiction in the world moral or social censorship is to be attributed for ethical or social welfare three religion censorship religion censorship is the means by which any material objectionable to a certain faith is removed this often involves a dominant religion forcing limitation on less prevalent ones Alternatively, one religion may shun the work of another when they believe the content is not appropriate for their faith. Religion is a very sensitive issue in Nigeria. An unguarded content allowed in the public arena could result in unwarranted and wanton destruction of lives and properties. Statement that may amount to blasphemy as contained in books and any other forms of information resources are usually censored by government or group of individuals in order to avoid escalation of religious or ethnic clashing. 4. Military Censorship The task of protecting the territorial integrity of any nation both from internal or external aggression lies in the hand of the military. Therefore, military administrations are usually the highest authority to protect the sovereignty for a country. So any pamphlet, later, report and publication against the military roles are censors for defense and security of the country. Military censorship with the process of keeping military intelligences and tactics confidential and keeping away from enemy very often military will also attempt to suppress politically inconvenient information that has no actual intelligent value or are deemed hostile and may threaten the peaceful conduct or existing of the people five internet censorship unlike censorship in other areas internet censorship is relatively new phenomena and remains seriously under research censored contents vary widely based on country culture and context what is banned in United States may not the same thing ban in China or even in Nigeria. And this may range from child pornography to gambling as well as censorship of dissident content as described by Asakov in the year 2010. database management the second aspect of today's discussion is on database management then what is a database database could be regarded as a collection of interrelated records with a given structure for acceptance storage and retrieval and dissemination of data on demand for multiple users 
for one or more application produces a database we all know that data is organized into data fields a data field is a component of a record corresponding to an attribute one record normally may have several data fields for example a record of book has several fields such as field for author that is the original the creator of the book field for title the title of the book field for edition statement whether it's the first edition second edition field for publisher that is the name of the publisher of that book and even field for place of publication whether it is published here in Kano in London in Sydney or any other state in the world and normally it also include the year of publication is it the year 2020 2021 or 2020 and so on these fields taken together make a record so how many fields are available in this book field of author title edition publisher place of publication and year of publication almost seven fields so these fields taken together make a record collection of related records all conforming to the same type and format from a data file for example a file on bibliography of Amin Kano contains records of reading materials on this subject so all the records in this file have a common subject and are interrelated meaning that each record contains such information as author title place of publication publishers year of publication edition pages etc etc this file is given a name for its storage and retrieval so it is the collection of such interrelated records with a given structure for acceptance, storage and retrieval and dissemination of data on demand for multiple users for one or more application that produces a database. Then database management. Management of data for decision making is not a new concept this process has been going on in one or the other way since long time since long time not now libraries ever since they came into existence in their present form have been dealing with data management manually not electronically but before it everything was done in a manual order the resources of the library are exposed to the library used through library catalog that is the key to the library collection an aggregate of catalog cards containing data of reading material on a type or printed form while the information about the journal is maintained in cardex form cardex spelled as k a r d e x for the journal details is contained in the cardex form while for the book collection in the library is con the information is being contained in the catalog these are nothing but example of manual database management the modern libraries we have now today 
applied computing power for management of these records. Thus, database management system have evolved a great deal from manual to computerized system over the last 40 years. It is the computer-based system that came to be known as DBMS, that is Database Management System. This system are used for defining, creating, manipulating, controlling, managing, and using database these systems are used for defining creating manipulating controlling managing and using databases that is the dbms database management system presently there are hundreds of database management systems such as DBase, Foxbase, CBase, Infamix, Delphi, etc. are the well-known example of general DBMS. While Lipsis, Alice, and Sol, S O U L, are example of library-oriented DBMS Advantages of database management Advantages of database management are myriad They are huge, many and enormous As you can see we have about 13 advantages of DBMS starting from the economy greater amount of information from the same amount of data sharing of data balancing conflict requirements enforcement of standards control over redundancy consistency data integrity data security flexibility are responsible it also enhance productivity of the programmer easiness in maintenance of program and the last one it brought data independence man saddled with a fatal brain is always in search of better alternatives if the new alternative is found to be more economic and efficient than the existing one, he will quickly switch over to the former. Same holds true of the modern DBMS database management systems, which have a number of advantages as we are going to discuss. Let's begin with number one, economy. In general, economy refers to the fact that the collective cost of several combined operations shall be less than the sum of the cost of the individual operations. Database approach culminates in centralization of application which lead to concentration of a larger, costly and more powerful computers and technical expertise in one location. This usually results in an economy of scale. Since many users share the same database, any improvement in the database will potentially benefit all of them. Meaning that if there are two set of systems for library automation, one consistent of integrated and the other consisted of independent modules for acquisition, cataloging, circulation and serial management work, the integrated system will definitely be more economic than the other. So it really brought the issue of economy. Two, 
transformation of data into information is the primary goal of a computer system. Yeah, that is to transform the data into information. Even if all the data that a user requires for producing our parts is available in the computer first, yet users will not have access to it easily and TOS will not be able to obtain the desired information for the report. Let's assume that the bibliographical details of book available in the library are available in a file or in a file oriented system. The data available in this file cannot be used for producing a list of books on a subject. If however the same data were available in a well-designed database, it can be used to have a list of books according to title or subject or even the class number. Thus, the same data can be used for producing several types of reports. That's what we mean by greater amount of information from the same amount of data. 3. Sharing of data In a database approach, same data can be shared by several unauthorized unauthor users. Several authorized users. Let's take for example, holdings of a library stored in a computerized database management system. Such holdings can be used by a library user for searching of books by subject or author or title or class number from any node through OPAC. OPAC O P A C or even to check out and check in books for the circulation or even duplicate checking by acquisition stop and so on similarly online catalogs can be shared that is the OFAC can be shared by libraries among themselves and many chain therein will be flashed to all the users automatically. In addition, new application can be developed using existing data in the database without the added burden of creating separate files. 4. Balancing conflicting requirements Database approach maintains the balance between the conflicting requirements of different users of data. Keeping the overall interest of the organization in mind, the database administrator, that is an expert of a group of experts within the organization to manage the database, must ensure that the database serves the purpose of the entire organization and not just a single user or a group of users. While an individual user group may be served less potentially in a database approach than it might have been if it had its own isolated system, the overall organization will definitely be benefited. If the organization benefits, so do the individual user groups. Thus, database approach take care of the requirement of the individual users as well as the organization as a whole. 5. Enforcement of Standard Central control of data ensures the enforcement of standard. There are several formats for exchange of information at international level. MAC format, Common Communication format, CCF, are the most important ones. Some library database management systems may follow MAC while others CCF that is the common communication format whatever standard is adopted by the library it is meticulous implementation its meticulous implementation is ensured in the database approach 6 
control over redundancy. Every library requests information of the publisher for use in acquisition, technical, and periodical sections. If a file is oriented system, this information will have to be stored in the three sections separately. But the storage of the same data in one file in a database management system will meet the requirement of all three user sections. As such, redundancy of maintaining multiple copies of the same data can be minimized. 7. Consistency Consistency here normally emanates from the control of redundancy and enforcement of standards that is as stated in item 5 and item 6. Let us assume that the author of a book is a corporate body. Its name is rendered according to some cataloging rules. Say AACR2, that is Anglo American Catalog Rule 2. In a database approach, if this name occurs at one place, there will be no scope for change in the style of its rendering in case of other documents authored by the same corporate body. But if it occurs in different files, there are chances that its name is rendered in different styles in different files. Same applied to the name of publishers. Thus, database ensures consistency. 8. Data Integrity Data in the database must follow the rule of integrity constraint. Data integrity implies that the data should be accurate, relevant, complete, and easily and timely accessible for the uses it is intended for. It must be accurate, relevant, complete, simple, and timely accessible for it uses. For example, database of a book in a library should contain data of entire book collection. It should be complete in respect of bibliographical details of each book. It should be relevant to the purpose for which it has been created and it should be easily accessible and retrievable whenever required. If the library database indicates the availability of a book in its collection which is actually not present or if the author of a book is not correct then the integrity of the database can be deemed to be doubtful. Database approach helps to ensure the integrity of the database because of its very structure. 9. Data Security Security of data is the main concern of every organization, particularly in Nigeria, Nigerian organizations. Security measure is a check against the unauthorized users and hackers who may destroy the valuable data. Data security is achieved through the scheme of password. Since database administrator, that is DBA, has control over the operational data. Database administrator DVA can further allow different users to have different types of access to the same data. For example, the staff of technical section may be authorized to enter and or change the data in the library catalog. While the library user may be allowed only to access the data but not to enter or change it. Such provision for security of data is possible in the DBMS. 10. Flexibility and Responsiveness In a file-oriented system, data maintained in different files by different users is not flexible and responsive. Assume that a list of books is arranged in alphabetical order by author in a file in the file oriented system. The system will not respond to queries for displaying this list in different orders such as alphabetical order by title 
subject, publisher, or date. If the same data is available in a structured database, it will be possible to get response from the same database by a user in all the different ways stated earlier. That is the title, the subject, the publisher or date. The flexibility furnished by DBMS aids the programmers to develop new program to satisfy specific user requests. 11. Enhance productivity of the programmer. There's a facility in almost all the DBMS for writing application. The programmer can employ this facility to write application to meet local requirements. Writing a file-oriented application is more complex job in comparison to writing a similar application using DBMS facility because the programmer does not have to worry about the mundane data manipulation activities. Studies have shown that on the average, programmer will be two to four times more productive. That is, a new application can be developed in one quarter to one half of the time it will take if it were a straight file oriented application. In addition, with the advent of first generation languages built around database management system, the productivity increase can be much more dramatic. 10 to 20 fold increase in productivity is not a matter of surprise. 12. Easiness in maintenance of program. A DBMS is a collection of thousands of interrelated small programs. When interacting with a DBMS, programs thought interlink are relatively independent of the actual data in the database. This means that any change to the structure of the data itself may not require maintenance of the existing application program. But this is not true in a straight file oriented environment. Even a simple change to file layout can force substantial changes in every program that accesses the file. In addition, since the low-level data manipulation is handled by the DBMS, details concerning this manipulation do not appear in programs. Thus, program maintenance becomes relatively easier in a database environment. 13. Data Independence While easiness in program maintenance is an important advantage of database approach, having programs independent of the structure of the database has other advantages as well. Yeah, without data independence, it will be difficult to change the database structure to improve performance and even to meet the changing requirement of the organization. No sooner the database structure is modified in a file-oriented system, all or some programs in the system will have to be changed. This fact will act as a strong incentive not to make any change. Fortunately, Data independent helps remove this obstacle. That is the obstacle to change the structure. Disadvantages of database management. The dictum that is a counteraction to every action holds true in database approach also. If there are advantages of database approach, there are disadvantages as well. Some of the perceptible disadvantages are size, complexity, cost, additional hardware requirements, and difficulty recovery, 
greater adverse impact of hardware software failure data recovery let's begin with the first one the size in order to support all the complex application that it must offer to the users a dbms has to be a large program occupying several megabytes of disk space as well as substantial amount of internal memory let's take for example microsoft word microsoft word is a simpler program as compared to dbase or cbase or even informix and the former occupy less hard disk space in comparison to the latter that is ms was normally occupy less space when compared to the base c base or informix size of the programs increases with its complexity so this is a great disadvantage of data based management system two complexity complexity and breadth of the application presented by dbms make it a complex product programmers and analysts must understand the features of the system well in order to make full exploitation of its power in addition with many choices to make while designing and implementing a new application using a dbms there are possibilities of making incorrect choices especially if the understanding of dbms is not through and it is not thorough enough and a few incorrect choices can spell disaster for the whole project three cost a good dbms is an expensive product by the time all the appropriate components related to dbms are purchased for a major mainframe system the total cost may run into millions of nera four additional hardware requirements because of the size and complexity of the dbms greater hardware resources will be required which will not be necessarily otherwise this means that if the hardware resources are not upgraded when a dbms is purchased users of the system may very well notice a severe degradation in performance purchase of additional hardware resources will further add to the cost the disadvantage of item 3 5 greater adverse impact of hardware and software failure in the database approach many of the data processing resources are concentrated in the database failure of any component be it hardware or software will have a far reaching consequences than in a non database environment meaning that all the nodes will go down in database environment while only one node will stop working in a file oriented system six data recovery more difficult due to complex nature of dbmx database management system the recovery of data in the event of a disaster is far more difficult and complicated than a file oriented environment sources for library database development the computing technology found 
libraries and information centers as one of the most potential areas for application ever since its advent in 1960s. Most of the libraries and the information centers in the developed countries are already automated, meaning that in these advanced developed nations they have already automated all their libraries and information centers. Introduction of this technology in libraries in the developing countries like Nigeria has also assumed high priority during the last few years. Automation of library activities involve application of computers to routine jobs, retroconversion of library catalog, construction of online union catalog of journal, construction of in-house bibliographical databases, sharing of resources, etc. etc. Automation of routine jobs of all types of library and all operation of a new library or a library with a small collection is not a difficult task. But retroconversion of library catalog and construction of online union catalog of library with large collection of books and back file of journal are strenuous and arduous mission. Some of the main sources of this database library development are shelf list of journal cardex to book journals and other reading materials three data sheet and four international utilities application of ICT to library information centers the the last topic of this module Ranganathan who is among the founding fathers of librarianship in his fifth law of librarianship for founded the library is a growing organism with the application of ICTs that is information and communication technologies to the improvement and smooth dissemination of library services, libraries have today proven that they are indeed a growing organism. Libraries have chosen not to be left behind as society is advancing technologically. New areas of knowledge and discipline are emerging and users' information needs are becoming more complex and sophisticated in nature. Libraries as a sole custodian of information resources and the leading provider of information services to all categories of users at all levels take the lead by taking the advantage of all ICTs can offer. ICT, Information and Communication Technology, is often used as extended synonym for information technology that is ICT but it is more specific term but it is a more specific term that stresses the role of unified communication and integration of telecommunication that is a telephone line and wireless signals computers as well as necessary enterprise software middleware storage and audio visual system which enable users to access to transmit and manipulate information According to Islam and Islam 2006, ICT is a comprehensive concept and also a parallel concept with information technology that denote not only a single unit but an assembly of technologies, that is the convergence of technologies like telecommunication equipment, data processing equipment, semiconductors, consumer electronics, etc., etc. The concept of ICT has brought phenomenal changes in the information collection, preservation and dissemination scene such as libraries and information centers. According to Nasruddin and Rokunazman 2002, it has opened that 
up a new chapter in library communication and facilitated global access to information crossing geographical limitation. Libraries in recent times are shifting their role from custodian of traditional information resources to provider of service-oriented digital information resources. Adamo and Omar 2017 noted that the widespread use of computers, increased reliance of computer network, rapid growth of internet and explosion in the quality and quantity of information have compelled libraries to adopt new means and method for the storage, retrieval and dissemination of information. benefits of ICTs to library users. In other words, what are the benefits of ICTs to teaming library users? As we all know, the application of ICT to library has led to numerous improvement in the way library users access and use library information resources and services. Other than enhancing user satisfaction, it has provided other benefit, as highlighted by Henderson, as cited in Adamu 2017. One, it provides easy and speedy access to information. Two, it provides remote access to users at every hour and at all time. 3. It provides access to unlimited information from different sources. 4. It provides increased flexibility. 5. It facilitates the reformatting and combination of data from different sources. Next, it facilitates the dissemination of information in line with user information need. And it is an alternative choice for the use of information resources. ICT-based library services Libraries have been providing different forms of service that were originally delivered manually in the past. By taking advantage of ICT, some of those ICT-based services provided by library are as follows 1 library web portal library provide quick access to users through a specially designed and developed web portal for the library which is available on the intranet this library web portal enables users to access many usable information frequently required by them it also links them to online journals subscribed by the libraries. It also links to electronic resources available through consortia program. This portal also used to communicate the campus news, important events, and other related information to the users through the intranet. 2. OPAC online public access catalog give access to the user for certain available reading material in library through computer terminal it allows searching the entire catalog online conveniently and quickly using one or more such techniques for example searching within the author title keyword class number etc etc Others are free text search, boolean search, or one or more of these combined together. 3. Research sharing. The libraries are also using information technology and ICT for research sharing. Libraries having computerized their working and services can be linked with each other through a suitable telecommunication technology. The system enables the participating library to obtain material from each other's collection in the form of list of books, indexes, and abstract of required article, required document by using computer terminal 
with printing facility. Information can be scanned first on the screen and if required relevant information can be obtained in the print out form. 4. Database Services A database in any collection of data organized by storage in a computer memory and designed for easy access by authorized users. The data may be in a form of text, numbers, and or encoded graphics. For providing access to database in another great is another great library services that has come to offer users access to quality academic and empirical research, especially for people using an academic or research institutions. 5. Literature Search Services Lover is providing e-services for literature search through various information sources within the library. Not only within but even outside the library or at national or international level in a short term with accuracy. Current awareness services and selective dissemination of information SDI services have become easy and it can be provided without causing any delay by using the new ICT. 6. Bibliographic Services Compilation of bibliographies is part of library work particularly in research and academic libraries. Browsing through the manual indexes and extras is a tedious and time-consuming work and does not always produce up-to-date results. Availability of databases in electronic form on CD-ROM or online offers convenient, efficient and cost-effective system for information retrieval. 7. Online Reference Services Digital references or virtual reference is a service by which a library reference service is conducted online and the reference transaction is a computer mediated communication meaning that is a form of reference service which is commenced by electronic means where patrons employ technology, a computer or any other form to communicate with professional without being physically absent. 8. Access to web resources. Libraries no doubt provide access to other form of electronic information resources such as e-journals, that is electronic journals, e-book, electronic books, electronic thesis, and electronic dissertations. From the library's point of view, digital format offers convenient of storage and maintenance, cost advantage, ability to target global users, etc. Dissertation and thesis are important sources of information and knowledge for further research. Thus, it has to be converted into digital form and made available on internet or intranet for continuous access. 9. Video Library Services Some libraries, particularly academic and public libraries, keep collection of audio and videos on CDs about seminars and lecture series presented at the various faculties within the university. Students and researchers can now refer back to previous episodes in order to gain better understanding even long after the class or session is over. 10 email publishing services 
email publishing is designed for delivering regular content-based email messages. Email publishing is a popular choice among people who enjoy the ease of receiving news items, articles, and short newsletters in their email box. Newsletters are also widely used by media companies to complement their web and print offerings. My name is Ahmad Amin Din Abubakar from the Department of Labor Information Sciences, Faculty of Education, Bayer University, Kano, facilitator of Model 3 for the GSP 1202 and 2202. Thanks for listening.